Hello, my name is Dr. Art Rastanet, and today we'll be reviewing how to segment an MRI for a fusion biopsy. This talk is for educational purposes only and not intended for direct patient care. The first step in fusion biopsy is understanding how it works. It takes two data sets and merges them together to gain the benefits of each of the Im imaging modalities. For example, ultrasound is easy, cheap, and can perform easily in your office and does not require large, bulky equipment like an MRI. But the trade-offs are the sensitivity and the specificity of the MRI allow us to see inside the prostate and target specific areas. And fusion technology itself allows us to guide, track, or record biopsies in 3D space. See these small little triangles that are being placed over this mess, mesh image? <laughs> the data set looks the same to the computer from the MRI or the ultrasound. It's a surface mesh placed over the object. The computer uses a mathematical equation to match these little triangles, which are unique to the contour of the prostate. And we'll show you how this aligns in a moment. I just want you to understand how the base process works. This is a little bit simpler cartoon showing two data sets on your left. Before registration, you can see there's unique triangles in blue and purple. And we want to align these to allow us to target a specific area in the prostate. Our two targets are denoted in the red and yellow hexagons. After co-registration, you can see the triangles align and now our targets are much closer together. There's always a slight error between the two data sets, but we're able to adjust this and overcome this by focusing during the fusion biopsy itself to make any small adjustments that are needed. Again, I mentioned that this is what it appears to the computer. These are the two data sets and we want to merge them together. You can see the blue and the blue tri the blue lines correlating with the triangle on the corresponding data set. This is how we fuse the image together. I think the most important step in, before we begin is understanding the anatomy of the prostate. Most important is the outline. That's why we're here. But there's components that give rise to this outline in the back or the peripheral zone. In the middle is a central gland. And the most important, which I'll highlight in the video that I made about doing this segmentation, is that the anterior fibromuscular stroma can be missed. If this isn't included, the, the segmentation will be off and you'll have difficulty during your biopsy. Let's start the case. This is a six-year-old Caucasian man with a past medical history of hypertension, coronary disease, some stents. He's had some mild LUTs over the years. He's been placed on a 5-ARI by an outside urologist and presents for an evaluation for an elevated PSA. His PSA is currently 9.2. He's biopsy naive. His XODF score was 13.5. Has no family history of prostate cancer or other G malignancies and no family history of breast cancer. So the plan is to get an MRI and possibly undergo a fusion biopsy for the patient. This is probably the most important screen. You've looked at the patient's history. You see his PSA has been climbing over the years. His MRI volume was 25.6 cc's. His PSA density is high at 0.35 nanograms per milliliter per cc. But the most important is focusing in on the report. There's a lesion in the right mid PZPL, series six, image 17. I talk about this in the upcoming segmentation video. The radiologist marked this series on the diffusion weight imaging. They probably should have used the T2 to help for standard workflow for the urologist. It's a PIRADS-4 lesion. There's no signs of EPE, but I also talk about the abutment and the lesion tracking along the right side of the gland in the upcoming video. The lesion seven by five by eight, but you also see how we currently contour the entire lesion and that may be larger than what's been reported here. Hello, good morning. Today we'll be going over how to segment using DynaCAD for your upcoming fusion biopsy. After you've opened your image, I recommend your hangings be set so you have across the first box the T2, the second is the diffusion weight imaging. We put that up to the B2000 so we can see any areas of high signal. And then over here on your right, you have your digital contrast enhanced MRI with some subtraction, which is this button up here, you can turn on or off. 
You can also set the zoom and the depth of your scan to focus where it is. And the little buttonology is right click gives you your options. But also if you use the middle wheel and the left mouse button, you can move it up and down and left and right. As we discussed in the prior slide, it says series six, but you can select a series by right clicking series six. Um, image 17, which was on the DWI. But on the T2 is where we'll find it on the same image number 17. And why is that? Because everything is scanned at the same time with the same planning. So the number up here in the left hand corner of the screen says image 17, the same image 17 here on the DWI, as well as the ADC map below. The lower left, I like the sagittal, and then the lower right, we'll put the coronal. The coronal is helpful to identify the apex during your segmentation. So to save your hanging, you right click on top of your prior ones and save it. Now this will pull it up the same way each time you open an MRI. So back to our first step. Our first step is reviewing the MRI for the segmentation. Hopefully the radiologist has marked it directly on the film, but if not, we right click here and it says freehand ROI the outline around it. So we're using the T2 right now. But I want to show you what's interesting. So this is our, our label it. You right click on it. Same label as the radiologist. Right, mid, PZ, PL. Okay, it's great. It's on one slice. And we have a lesion. Now, if you're new to this and you want to get, does this really line up well, you can right click on it and click propagate. and goes boom, boom, boom. Every scan it'll show you the same spot, all correlated, one with the other. Now, the challenge with this is, is that we use the T2, which is the upper left for the biopsy, but other information helps us really see what's going on and make an assessment. I wanna, I wanna make sure we highlight the entire lesion, so I'm gonna right click, click edit slash make 3D ROI, That's just a warning because this case was already previously done. You can see how as we go up towards the base of the prostate, there's more high signal in the B2000 here. The ADC map is positive as well as the DCE over here on the left. So we're going to create our line around it. And interesting, this case is interesting. As we look, you can see that the lesion spreads out along the base here of the prostate and it kind of cuts across like this and cuts in and this is not recorded by the radiologist they just gave you the focal lesion you can see it kind of extends up to here and there's a little bit of possible epe as it extends up this was not appreciated during the um, initial report but get, i know the pathology now and everything seems to align when we find this. So we continue, we have our lesion marked. You can see there's a little bit of satellite lesions and changes here, and that's also represented here, and you have some contrast. So on the next sl slide, you have this dense area comes up, And this kind of goes along with the lesion. So that's our only lesion in this case, but we can scroll through and look, see if we see anything else. I typically use the middle screen, my diffusion weight imaging. If your screens do not scroll together, see this link button, you can turn it off, then it doesn't link together. But if you click it on, it'll link it together so you can look at the whole scan together. And I think this is very helpful when reviewing cases. Now, while we're here today, we're going to be discuss segmentation. So let's go over some basic anatomy. We showed you where the lesion was from the report. The white stuff around here is the peripheral zone, high signal. In the center is the transition zone. Up here, this little dense spot right here is the big area of the uh, central zone that extends into the seminal vesicles. So let's click gland segmentation. This window will now pop open. And I'm going to show you some tricks to kind of help you get through segmentation. First we want to click if it's not done for you already we're going to click segmentation here and it plays down a basic outline of the prostate. This is where you have to fine tune it. 
This is all in real time, it's not sped up. So now you see this green outline of the prostate. This is really important for the segmentation because in the video, I'll also go over why this is so important. You see your lesion again. Sometimes I look at the T2, I will um, find lesions here when I'm doing my segmentation. So you can see it's off clearly. There's some widgets over here on the side. Now, if you want to move the, the, the whole model, you can grab it, pan it left, right. Everything moves in 3D or together because these are reformats. This screen over here in the upper right and the lower left are the same image, just reformatted. You can resize the, 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 the model up and down if it's, there's a scaling issue. I typically never use this button and I never use the rotate, which you can grab and rotate the scan. I do use grab where you can push the lesion in and i think this is the easiest way to start there's a region of influence which is see this yellow line that travels around if it's too big you can shrink it by using the left mouse click in and out so you don't want to have it too big because it does change things above and below your image and then in this case i'm going to leave it about a quarter of the prostate so then i can push up here and work in my space. Um, there's a little bit of a dense tissue here. It's an anterior fibro muscle stroma. As we come up here, we are just aligning everything. You can see the wall of the bladder comes down. That's not to be included in the segmentation or the seminal vesicles. Sometimes a little part of the seminal vesicles is there. And if you look, it's pretty close, but you see there's a little bit of prostate on both sides. So I'm going to come down to the lower one and just tug it down a little bit to capture that area. This is going to take some practice. So now that looks pretty easy, right? Sometimes when you're not good or you're struggling, we're going to go back over here. And I'll show you a trick. You go to correlate. Now the correlation key is on. And if you have the correlation key, when you touch things, it shows you where you are in the lower screen. These aren't a perfect match. It's really only going to match the T2 axial, but it gives you an idea how far to come down. Where is the apex? You can see there's no apex here in the lower coronal that we're looking at. As it comes up, you can see it, it aligns with the edge of the, the apex. That's how you can tell how far to go down. And I think that's the first thing that's important. Next is you're looking at is that the anterior fibromuscular muscle stroma here that I'm missing, which it looks like it is. You can see on this, there's a little knuckle there that goes up. So I would push this up to make sure that I included the anterior fibromuscular muscle stroma going up to the, the base of the prostate. And you see these white structures on each side, these high signal areas, those are the vessels. So we have that. And then it seems like too much. You can use a shortcut. I push the control. You see how it turns to a circle. I can make a little more finer adjustments to make sure everything lines up as best as possible. And the importance of this is, is that your ultrasound image will capture this as well when you merge them together. So we've created our segmentation. You can look in each plane but you can see it's not as detailed as the T2 because everything is reformatted from this axial T2 here. And again, when you click on things, you can see it move. You can see the edge of the prostate here. You come down, if you're having trouble visualizing, you can use the T2 axials, coronals. I think the coronal is probably the most helpful when trying to find out where the peripheral zone stops. As we move down, I'm just clicking. And you can see, we can see where the edge of the prostate is. And this is a great way to practice. And then this is one of the most common areas I see for mistakes. Number one is the AFM is not included, the anterior prior muscular stroma. And number two is that the apex is not in the correct position. You click approve, approve the boundary. And then you can right click over here, show the boundary. So now you can scroll through to make sure that you've looked at this. In this case, you can see that the dark spot was not included on that edge of the prostate. I can go back and fix it because it was dark and it wasn't that bright white high signal area that we're typically used to. I could prove it, come back, and then we click on 
show the prostate boundary. And now you can see how the lesions within the boundary. We did draw this area that was a little dense that kind of tracked outside the prostate near the base. And we have segmentation is done. So remember, the, your hanging should be set, so it always puts them in the right order, which is what we just did. I zoom in, slide it over. You can zoom. A shortcut zoom is middle mouse and right, uh, middle button and right mouse click to in and out, or pan and move it around is left and middle button. Or if you forget, you can just pick the, the, the pan from the right click menu over here. After the case, you can see where the biopsy cores went through the lesion, what was sampled. And that is it for how to segment the prostate. You can see here after our discussion, the pathology came back gray group four disease. 5% of the total tumor was pattern five and a total core length of 14 millimeters in its longest core with PNI identified. As we talked about, and I alluded to in the MRI discussion, is that you can see the tumor track against the posterior aspect of the prostate, and it tracks out and lateral. There's probably a high probability there'll be EPE on surgery. So when you use the information in the MRI, now you can maybe plan surgery a little bit better. Thank you again for taking the time to review this educational video. For any more information, and additional content, please check out my YouTube channel at Dr. Art Raston Had. There's an entire MR fusion course, how to read an MRI, focal therapy, and additional resources that you can access there. Please feel free to DM me on Twitter. Otherwise, I wish you the best and have a great day and good luck.